Hello everybody, today I just want to talk about this Poison Creeper only build that I made. Um, it's very, very uh, interesting. It'll be very interesting to see how it turns out. But the philosophy behind the build is we use temperings to get the Poison Creeper down to a zero CD. We walk up, we poison a bunch of things, we utilize the falls to get quick burst damage uh, in addition to just putting a very, very high amount of poison damage onto things. Um, so that being said, let me go ahead and break down the build. So first, how do we get to the zero CD? You're going to want to have uh, poison creeper cooldown reduction, master worked on one, poison creeper cooldown reduction, just kind of maxed out on the other. That's going to give you 50%. Now, keep in mind this is like high end, like when you have really good rolls and everything. Then you're going to want to have cooldown reduction on your amulet, cooldown reduction on your helmet, and then once the falls, you're getting another 10%. So you'll see here you have 44. For some reason, it's not letting me put in the three masterwork ranks on cooldown on the falls. I'm not sure why. I'm pretty sure you are able to do that aspect of the master working on it. But that would bring it up to about 50%. Uh, plus, you know, what we have going here would be 100%. So this should be at like a zero CD. So you can just start spamming it. It's like going to be a little bit harder than the other companion skills to get to zero. But um, once you do, I think it'll be pretty fun to play. Okay, so uh, that's how we get that down to zero CD. So we walk up, we poison creeper things until their health bar, and we walk away. Why do we do this? It's because we have Craven Aspect on. So this gives us 40% increased movement speed when we're moving away from slowed enemies. We take Neurotoxin. That's going to make everything slowed. So we're going to move really, really fast because we're going to run 38.5% move speed on our boots plus another 18%. So that right there is 50% plus the 40% is just like absolutely wild. Plus we're going to run movement speed on our amulet as well. So this build is going to have an insane amount of movement speed and move very, very, very quickly. Okay. Um, that being said, moving right along when it comes to legendary aspects, because we're running such a high amount of CDR, we're running the totem here. We have about 44% CDR. This is extremely important because if we go into our skill tree, which I think I need to take a point out of something here. Oh, I don't know why I have a point in that. There we go. If we look at our skill tree, right, this is going to last for 9.2 seconds. So if we reduce it down by like 50 or 45%, the downtime on this is only going to be like a second or two, right? So we're going to have a lot of uptime on our 20% uh, on things deal 20% less damage. Um, on top of that, if you look here, you'll notice I have debilitating roar cooldown on everything. Uh, on everything that I can, so 16.8, 16.8, that's 32, uh, or I guess that's roughly, we're just going to round it up and say 34. So that's 34% right there. Uh, another 11.5, so that's 45%. So that means I have almost 90% cooldown reduction on debilitating roar. Why is that important? Because that's going to take our debilitating roar down to where it's going to be sub four seconds. You're, it, which means that you're going to have debilitating roar up 100% of the time. So when you have debilitating roar up, that reduces things damage dealt by 70%. So this is going to be an incredibly tanky build. While it might be slow in certain situations to get things dead, like the bossing is probably going to be the worst part of this build, you're probably going to want to avoid bossing uh, really at all costs. I, I really don't see a world where you're going to want to do bosses with this because I think that, um, you know, just you're going to be waiting so long for the poison to take effect because we are running things like poison creeper duration and stuff like that just to keep, just to make the poison creeper last even longer. So, um, yeah, so just kind of keep that, keep that in mind with this build. Um, okay. So that's just the debilitating roar combo for defense. Then, up here because we are running conceited aspect uh, we have earthen bulwark on with mending stone as well as um, the earth guard aspect so this is going to mean every time we cc something which we're going to immobilize everything with our poison creeper uh, for each one we do it's going to give us an even fatter shield so you can see right here i have this up to like 14,000 in shield so that's going to go up to like 20 you know 20 25,000 whatever just in a shield that's going to last for nine seconds, or I guess it's going to absorb uh, 35,000 damage, right? So it's going to last for nine seconds because we have the 50% CDR roughly. That means we're going to have like virtually a 100% uptime uh, on our Earthen Bulwark, depending on how much damage we're taking, obviously, right? 
So this is going to be our way of kind of proccing our conceited aspect is just by kind of maximizing uh, keeping up that shield. Okay, so that's um, the combo with that. We do run Blood Howl. This is just to give us an attack speed increase uh, mainly and just like a nice little bump in healing if we need it. But realistically, with Hurricane being up virtually the whole time, with uh, Debilitating Roar being up all the time, I mean, that right there is an, I don't know if this is additive or like how this gets added up, but that's like roughly like, you know, you could say anywhere from a 70 to 90% damage reduction to everything uh, virtually all the time. So that's just um, like, yeah, like that's just kind of wild. Um, that's a lot of damage reduction. Very, very tanky build. Uh, we run Juggernauts to get us up to the armor cap because you need to have like an 18 or 19,000 armor cap in order to do a pit 200. So I just throw on Juggernauts because that really just kind of eliminates, uh, it really kind of eliminates that. Um, so just to kind of go through uh, the secondary stats here uh, for the defensive stuff, we have cooldown reduction, poison, plus eight ranks to poison creeper. That is masterworked. Uh, then we have lucky hit chance. The reason why we have lucky hit chance is simply because we are running Zafals. If we were not running Zafals, you don't really necessarily need the lucky hit chance. It's just to try to maximize that because um, Poison Creeper only has a 28% lucky hit chance coefficient. So stacking lucky hit is going to help you get a lot more Zafals procs, which is going to help increase the burst aspect of your build. Because if you're not aware, they changed Changeling's Debt. They've changed Blurred Beast. You no longer have a way to really proc the total amount of poison damage that is on the target anymore. That's kind of like the main nerf that's happened over the seasons of Poison Creeper. Because Poison Creeper was kind of the goat for a while because of those two aspects. Both of those got changed to where they don't do that anymore. So now you actually have to wait the full duration. So the Falls is like the last thing of burst that you're going to have. Now... Um, that being said, so going back to the stats here, sorry I got a little off track when I went on my lucky hit tangent. We have debilitating roar cooldown, poison creeper duration. Uh, again, so we have max life, armor, debilitating roar, and I'm just doing armor until I hit that cat, until that 18 or 19,000, and then I'm done putting armor on things. So 12,000 max life just to make us tankier, helps with our earthen uh, bulwark shield. And then uh, debilitating roar cooldown, poison creeper again. So on the leggings so poison creeper duration debilitating roar you'll notice i put resist all the reason i put resist all on here is because i don't really need it anymore uh, or sorry i don't need the other stuff anymore and i'm trying to make sure i shore up the resistances here um granted there's some stuff that isn't going through here like for example my skills aren't going through here i actually am over capped on all of this i probably don't even necessarily need the 14.5 percent once you hit level 100 you shouldn't need to have uh all resist i don't think on any of your gear and if you do you might need it on one piece but yeah, so then moving on to the boots, uh, resist all, movement speed, max life, movement speed, uh, poison creeper duration. Okay, so that's going to be it for the defensive stuff, uh, going into the offensive aspects and stuff like that. So we're going to be running on the gloves, the accursed touch with attack speed, damage over time, lucky hit, and poison creeper damage. Remember that dots cannot crit in Diablo 4, so running crit and critical strike damage is not good. <clears throat> so 72.5% damage over time, attack speed, lucky hit, uh, poison creeper damage, poison creeper duration. If I was not running the lucky hit, I would probably just end up running, mm, let's see, what would I end up running here? I would say, so if I don't have these falls, i probably just run willpower, honestly. It's probably the only other good option. The reason why we run attack speed is so we can just cast poison creeper faster. It's the only reason. Okay, and then, oh, and I also am doing max life gems and everything because that's like the best thing. So 9% max life, it just gives you, it just makes you so tanky. Okay, uh, moving right along to the weapon, conceited aspect. This is giving us a 25% multiplicative damage multiplier while we have earthen bulwark up. And we do have two aspects for earthen bulwark, uh, which is going to really help out. It also gives us access to unstoppable. So while earthen bulwark is active, we are unstoppable. So that's going to be pretty nice. Um, in terms of secondary stats on here, I have attack speed, damage over time, uh, percent damage, and then poison creeper damage, and then I have the poison creeper damage masterworked, and then I have elemental surge. Now, elemental surge in the PTR is broken and needs to be nerfed. However, I don't anticipate them removing elemental surge entirely. I actually do think it's necessary to have elemental surge. I think it just needs to be nerfed. Because what you have here is up to a 40% chance to deal 33,000 poison damage. This gives us, again, access to burst that we so desperately need for this build. 
right? So we put this on here. We also put this on our um, uh, our offhand. And the reason for that is because it gives us more access to burst, okay? Because it's 33,000 base damage, and then it goes through all your multipliers and yada, yada, yada. And I have a bunch of stuff that makes me deal increased poison damage in my Paragon. So this is just, like, Elemental Surge is just so good for this build. It does need to be nerfed because it does way too much damage right now in the PTR. But um, it definitely, like, I really hope they don't remove this because it's really going to help shore up the burst of the build. And hopefully hopefully fingers crossed it's going to solve our bossing issues like because that's the whole idea of the falls and all this it's just please fix the burst please daddy fix the burst okay 18 percent damage over time jim because that's going to be the best thing but again so attack speed damage over time uh percent damage um thing about the percent damage is like i'm not 100 percent certain like you could go max life here i think as well if you because like 36 percent damage really isn't that much like Giving up that for max life, I don't even think is that bad. Um, 122 willpower doesn't really come out to anything too crazy. So I'm not really certain that that's worth it uh, either. So like max life might actually be the better play here uh, just to be tankier. But for right now, I have damage on it. Okay, moving on to the amulet. So we have the cooldown reduction. We have ranks to call the wild passive. So call the wild got buffed, okay? And what that does now is it gives you 12% per rank. So that means by having the plus four to this, uh, I have 48% increased damage, multiplicative damage to my poison creeper. It's just too good. It's the absolute best stat you can roll on the amulet in terms of damage for the poison creeper. Then we run move speed, cooldown reduction, because we don't need armor or anything. Um, then we have the poison creeper cooldown and the poison creeper damage. Okay, so moving right along to edge masters. Uh, oh, and then we're running a Necklace of the Stampede because it's the biggest multiplicative damage multiplier that we can get uh, to put on our amulet. Okay, moving on to Edge Masters. Because this is resourceless, uh, we are just getting a flat 20% increase to damage here with this, which is pretty nice. So we're going attack speed, damage over time, lucky hit chance, poison creeper cooldown. If you did not, again, if you were only running lucky hit, really, I guess. Well, actually, I take that back. I, I think I misspoke. You actually do need the lucky hit. I'm sorry. You do need the lucky hit because if elemental surge stays in the game, you're going to want the lucky hit on all your gear just to proc that. So I actually take that back. Even if you don't have Safal's lucky hit is good as long as you have this stuff tempered on. So you're going to want to keep the lucky hit as long as you have that stuff tempered. I guess if you don't have any of those tempers yet, um, you could run... What else? You'd have to run willpower, ferocity, or max life. Actually, probably just, just go max life. Instead of lucky hit, just go max life if you don't have any lucky hit effects to proc yet. Okay. Um, then we are doing some falls. This does a lot of damage, and it actually got buffed in Season 4 because now it's going to scale with your weapon damage. They made all of these flat damage things scale with your weapon damage, so they're just way stronger now, Just and they're going to scale way better into the late game. So Zafals, or Zafals, I think I was pronounced that right, is just going to be obnoxious. It has literally everything you want. Damage over time, lucky hit, cooldown, plus 41 to... All stats isn't that good. We'd rather have attack speed, but that's okay, right? Okay, moving on to the offhand. We are doing... Oh, and also, um, sorry, last thing. If you don't have Safals, you're probably wondering, like, okay, what, what do I run in this spot uh, for a legendary aspect? So let me go ahead and take a look here because honestly, and I'm just going to keep it real with you, I don't think there's a good option. Um... You could maybe do intercom, but that would require you to stand still. But it would technically strictly help for bossing because it would be a 30% damage increase while bossing. So maybe that could be worth it. Um, let's see. What you? No, it's not going to be very good. The only thing I, the only thing that I could really think of that you could do here is if you don't have Zafals, I guess you could go. Um, wild rage you could go aspect of the wild rage and what that does is it makes it to where this is going to uh, affect your poison creeper and because you know you have such a low cooldown debilitating roar you should be able to keep that up the whole time however that is a, a buff that you're going to have to juggle which is going to kind of suck i have ursine strength here just because it's a 30 percent damage increase and it's easy so yeah um, and it's just easier to have up. So it's giving up 20% damage just for functionality, really. But technically, Wild Rage with Bestial Rampage is going to be best. So do that. Go ahead and then go ahead and put Poison Creeper cooldown reduction because it 
believe it or not, having not having Safals is not that big of a deal. Uh, because as long as you can put like the elemental surge here, you'll still have a little bit of burst and it'll actually make it easier for you to hit your poison creeper down to zero CD earlier on. So earlier on, you're really not even going to want to run Savals, but just copy this uh, same formula here, put it here and then throw like wild rage on, uh, or you could eat honestly intercom. I actually don't think is that bad because it just helps shore up your bossing because you're going to stand still with bossing anyway. So, um, that's probably not too bad and even if you move you're still getting something like you're still getting a five to ten percent damage increase so yeah i guess i guess there's something to say there now you might say why not run subterranean and the reason why is because that doesn't do anything for you uh it's it doesn't actually increase poison creeper damage it just increases uh land it just makes like your landslide damage go up so uh, it, it's really not that good i guess also if you wanted to you could put shepherd's aspect on here um, but at the same time, that's even, that's really not even that good because you're not stacking companions. So I take that back. It's not like, man, it's, God, there really is no good options here. But so yeah, I think I'm just gonna say either go wild rage or that intercom just to have something that gives you damage. That's that's really it. That's really all you can do, I think, with that. Okay, so that's gonna so that's gonna be it for aspects and such like that. Um, I do have 525 armor. Uh, in all of this just to try to again help shore up like armor values and stuff like that so you see here i have 10,690 armor i actually probably drop armor on one of these but uh, moving along right along into the skill tree so actually let's do the boons first so 10 percent damage from elites attack speed max life uh bolster because we have so many defensive skills uh we have three it's going to make you fortified like all the time you actually have no way to proc any of this so don't even worry about this last one you don't have any shape shifting skills that are going to critically strike uh you don't have uh, any nature magic skills that are going to reduce an ultimate because you're not even running an ultimate um i guess oh well, sorry i guess this here you could do this just because you do have storm strike on the bar but um just purely for the damage reduction buff but that's yeah, that's really it. So because they changed damage reduction uh, in in D4, like it's just and it's harder to make a tankier character. Uh, I threw Stormstrike on the bar because like we literally have like nothing else to do. So like why the heck not, right? So yeah, so we have Stormstrike here. It gives us access to vulnerable. It also gives us a damage reduction buff that we can keep up. And if you want to, you can also run Aspect of Might on your gear if you're not into the whole Earthen Bulwark thing. Uh, but I, if you are going to do that, I would say get rid of this one. And then you could run Aspect of Might, and you could keep up two uh, damage reduction buffs, which will make you even tankier. Coming down here, so uh, I did... Oh, what the heck? I don't even need this in crit. What am I doing? So I wanted the 12% move speed, and I also wanted the 9% damage reduction while in Werebear form, because since this is going to have such a low CD, this persists three seconds after, so it's just more damage reduction. Um, moving right along here, we have 5 out of 5 ranks, just because we have literally nothing else to put the points in. Uh, we do uh, specifically put ranks into this because it reduces the cooldown. That's also why we have it rolled on our chest piece. Um, ancestral Fortitude, Vigilance. So we have 15% damage reduction. Since we have three skills, we can juggle this and have like a permanent uptime on it. I mean, r realistically, we'll have permanent uptime just from debilitating Roar spamming that all the time. Uh, we have Poison Creeper, Enhanced Poison Creeper, Ferocious Poison Creeper to make it do tons and tons of damage. We have Call of the Wild, 84% multiplicative bonus damage increase because of the amulet. Um, otherwise it would just be like 48% or something like that. Um, moving on down to here, we have, uh, elemental exposure because we do have a storm skill that we're using and our storm skills have a chance to make things vulnerable. So by having hurricane up, it gives you another more access to vulnerable instead of only having to rely on the vampiric curse thing. So it says you have a chance uh, to inflict vampiric curse on enemies and people that have vampiric curse on them are also vulnerable um and we don't really run this for the damage it's just we we do the whole vampiric curse thing simply for uh access to vulnerable right and this is going to give us more access to vulnerable and then uh some really super super sweet damage reduction okay uh we do run one point neurotoxin just so we have the slow coming down here i ran heightened senses because since we are changing into this and this all the time I figured it would probably be pretty worth it to run this because it will give us a movement speed buff and uh, and a damage reduction buff. And while both are active, which both should be active relatively a lot, uh, you'll have a 12% movement speed increase, 12% damage reduction. And then uh, keep in mind, you'll have 12% there, and then you'll also have another 12% uh, from this from your 
from your werewolf form so you'll have like oh just so much movement speed like you should be this is probably going to be like one of the fastest builds just in terms of how fast it can move like in d4 with how much move speed it has like it just has so much move speed um okay and then moving right along to last thing ursine strength it gives 30 percent damage increase that's why we run it another thing is because we are in werebear form so much we get 20 percent additional max life so we benefit a lot from this so again just super super tanky really like we are so tanky and then the last two points god what do i even put this in uh no it's not even worth it it doesn't do anything relevant there i'm trying to think what to put this in like this is it this is the biggest issue with these like solo builds it's like what the hell do i put these points in because we don't need this we don't need this um i guess i could just do this maybe I don't like because this doesn't benefit us because we don't do we don't crit. Um, <laughs> I mean, I could do this just to get twelve percent additional healing. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna say screw it. Why not? I'll, I'll figure something else out to do the last point. This is just the first draft, but yeah. So, okay, Paragon. Let's go ahead and look at the Paragon. So first thing we're running down here is we have Keeper. 10% multiplicative damage increase uh, for non-physical damage. So that's pretty good. It also increases how much damage all resist uh, and willpower we're getting from this. So overall, pretty good. Um, I don't think there's any glyph that's really going to do do better than this. I think you get a lot of value, a lot of bang for your buck out of this. Moving down here to get some max life and armor. Coming up here. We're going Wild's Inner Beast because it gives us the uh, highest amount of intelligence you can get. And you can also get some armor, some willpower, etc. So this is going to increase the passive portion of your campaign damage by 130% and then just give you a 267% uh, additive damage buff, which is pretty cool. Uh, attack speed over here because attack speed is good for this build. Keep going down. Then we go to Heightened Malice. Uh, we have Glyph Socket, Poisoning Damage Effects last 40% longer, on top of deal more damage to Poison Targets. So after we do one Poison Creeper, it's going to make us do more damage to the next, and it's going to make uh, our Poison Creeper just last even longer. So it'll make it a lot, like, this thing's going to last forever. I know it says over 6 seconds, but this isn't taking into account any Temperings or this. So, like, realistically, your Poison Creeper is going to last for, like, 11 or 12 seconds or something like that. Okay, uh, come down here, damage to poisoned enemies, and then damage reduction uh, from poisoned enemies is going to be super, super good. Moving up here, more damage to poisoned enemies, damage to poisoned enemies, damage to elites. Uh, heightened malice, you know, 45% more things whenever we're, like, just hitting things in AoE packs. You can come up here, uh, pick up Undaunted, do this just because we are going to be fortified all the time. So a little bit of a damage buff, and the main reason why we take this is just for more damage reduction. More tankiness, tank, 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 tankiness. Okay, coming down here, we have Bane. This gives us a 15% chance to deal double the amount of damage over their duration. So this means that we have a 50% chance to ascent, like, it's just, it doubles the tick damage. Like, it just, you have a 15% chance to double the amount of damage your poison's going to do, which is going to make it, so if it would have killed something in 6 seconds, it's now going to kill something in 3 seconds, right? Okay, so it's pretty good. And it makes you do 100% more poison damage, which also affects uh, our... Uh, elemental surge here right okay moving right along we have human form so because we're in human form we deal more damage uh, you are in human form when you cast poison creeper and then you also get 10 percent damage reduction while you're in human form so while you're casting poison creeper uh, you just get even more damage reduction right okay um and then i have this specifically just because of the fact that you get 10 willpower i don't actually care about having more damage while in wear bear form because it doesn't matter I just wanted the, uh, I just felt it was worth to get the extra willpower. Okay, so that is, uh, that's the Paragon board. But, um, yeah, so this is what it's looking like. I think, personally, I am going to make this build at some point. I'm going to be making all of these builds, assuming that the cooldown reduction does not get nerfed on launch. All these builds that I'm posting are kind of going to become dead if they do that. So, cross our fingers and really hope that that does not happen and that is not the case. But anyways, I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.